All right, this is the third segment. And I'm trying to control my temper. As I said, willful stupidity really bothers me. What I want to show in this third segment is how it is that, say, the NASB translation here, okay, 1995, and we saw that in the 1977 version of the same version, see, NASB, same version, NASB, Codes just mean strongs. Strongs is a piece of garbage. The earlier version of it is called NAS in 1977. It is right here. See? Same word, same Bible, same version. They knew in 1977 that the Hebrew that I'm going to show in this segment means miscarriage. They knew that. So did the New American Bible, which is much later. They knew that. The JPS Tanakh from 1917 would be more inclined to use poetic language. Okay, and it is a literal translation. Yeled often means, I'm going to show it to you in, in a few minutes. Yeled is the word in Hebrew. And it, 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 it means unborn child. Okay? And I'm going to show you that the, the lexicons know that. Unborn. So it's called fruit because you don't know if it's male or female yet. All right? Fruit of the womb. We've all heard that. All right? Depart means to go out. It, this isn't the word that's used for birthing. This is the word that's used for spontaneous abortion, a.k.a. miscarriage. But in 1917, because it, it's an uncomfortable thing, it's not something anybody wants to happen, they're using poetic language. Her fruit depart. And that's the same language that back in... 1611, the King James uses, and that Webster uses, as we'll see. See? See, it's not really a child, but it's, it could be. It's unborn. You don't know if it's male or female, so you can't call it a boy or a girl or a son or a daughter because it isn't a human yet. The fetus departs. All right? Fetus is a medical word. They didn't use those words in the old days. Okay, English Standard, this is not true at all. But I'll show you where they get it from. All right, fruit to part. All right, the point I want to show is that, again, this is known. It was known in the NAS in 1977, 1977, down here, the same version of that Bible up here, but it's 1995. So what you're looking at here is a very clear instance of political cover-up or political catering or political pandering in order to sell Bibles. Okay, that's what you're looking at. Now, how do I know for sure that it's just the political motive to change it, besides the fact that in 1977 they knew it meant miscarriage, and now they're covering that up by saying, gives birth prematurely. How do I know that's not even in the translation? That's not in the meaning of the Hebrew. Again, we come here. Wa, la, Yalade. Yalada. Okay? Yaleda. It's coming from Yaled. The actual word is right here. But Yaled means a fetus. And this is theological workbook 
of the Old Testament. It's not my words. It's not my interpretation. Okay? You come down here to your lead. And then, did I go past it? I went past it. No, I didn't go past it. That's yalad. Yalad is to give birth. Okay, it's a verb. Yaled. This is what the word that we're looking at here. The word that's highlighted in blue in the upper screen is the word transliterated yaled. Okay, now watch. Once yaled refers to a fetus. Exodus 21, 22. These are not my words. This is not my interpretation. I am a librarian for all intents and purposes, a reporter, a witness. The, the, the words in front of you, I didn't write them. This is not an opinion. Okay? It's a report. It's a report of something you can independently check. The words in front of you are Hebrew words. I did not write them. God wrote them through Moses. The lower court, the lower part of the screen is in light blue in the theological word book of the Old Testament, one of the most respected sets of lexicons, you know, in seminary. I didn't write those words highlighted in blue. I'm highlighting them in blue and showing them on screen. That's all I'm doing. Now I say that because a lot of people are going to try and deflect attention with red herrings and say, well, Brea, that's just your opinion. Those aren't my words. It's not my opinion. If the sun is in the sky and you talk to somebody and say, oh, the sun is in the sky, that's not your opinion. You're reporting on something you saw. Well, here you go, in front of your face, just like the sun in front of the sky. I didn't write these words. It's a fetus. Now, what is the fetus doing? The fetus is going out. Oftentimes in Hebrew, the subject of a verb comes after the verb, like the very famous phrase all over the Old Testament, Wa Yomer Elohim, and said God, Wa means and, Omer means said, and then Elohim, God. Okay? They, they reverse the order from what we use in English. All right, that's what's happening here. This is the word for to go out. That, like Exodus, go out, leave, go, okay? This is the verb, yatsa, okay? It's in the cal, which means it's in the factual. It's factual. It's not iffy. It's, it happens, okay? Wa means and, but since, sometimes because of, by contrast, okay? Perfect means it happened, completed action. Third person common plural. What? This is a common noun construct, yeled. Okay, yeleda is the actual word, see? and goes out, but it's in the third person common plural. This is a third person common plural construct, see? Masculine plural construct, but it's got a female suffix. Okay, now what does that mean? You know how we'll be talking, we'll say, well, I spoke to her and she said it wasn't theirs. She's using a plural. It's called, in English, we call that, it's not really even good English, but we all use it now. When you are speaking of somebody in the impersonal, life, the person does not exist, it's just a principle. Or it's anybody in principle. 
they. We say they or their in plural. Okay? If somebody's guilty of a law, it isn't, and, and the president says it's not their fault. Somebody is singular. But we say it's not their fault. Why? Because we're trying to avoid saying his fault or her fault because the somebody can be male or female. So we've now, in common parlance in English, we just say it's their fault. We use the plural. That's what's happening here. In other words, it's not male, it's not female, it's a fetus, it's not human. So it's in the plural, the third person plural. Could be more than one, because she could be pregnant with twins. You see that? It's an imperson, what you could probably call an impersonal plural. Okay? And then that's why yeled is used, yeled, because that's an impersonal, it means a fetus, I just showed that to you in the lexicon. It's an impersonal idea of a child, not a human being yet. Impersonal, remember? Down here, down here, okay? The scholars know, where is it? The scholars know that yeled means a fetus, okay? Now the significant thing about this is it's yeled with her at the end, to her. So, and going out, plural, yeled, plural, from her, to her, of her. And since the last word is effectively the word her, then this modifies her. So it's saying, and no, nothing happens of damage to her. In other words, the only damage done is that the fetus, yatsa, comes out. Not born, comes out, falls out. The same phraseology is used here, except just like in English, again, another figure of speech, we, when somebody's pregnant, we say they're with child. It's not a child yet. But we're expecting it to be born. Okay? And this is saying ex elexito, no, ex ericomai, sorry. This coming out the child. Except that's not saying child, it's saying fetus. This was their word for fetus in Greek. Okay? Paideon, the, the little diminutive here. Okay? Of her, to her, no harm comes. Okay? See, there's may. To her, of her. See, it's playing the same game that's played here in the Hebrew. It's trying to translate it literally. It's trying to capitalize on the ending. So, of her, to her, no harm comes. So if the fetus exits the womb, and it's a fetus, it's not, it doesn't, it's not born. It just exits. See? Exit. The fetus of hers. And it could be plural because, you know, maybe it's maybe she's got twins. So the impersonal plural is used. But to her, no damage occurs. So if the fetus is lost, but there's no damage to her, then it's a civil case, and the person who hurt her is fined with money, fined, or a goat or something, as the woman's husband demands of the one who hurt her. That's a civil case. It's not murder. Now. 
I'm sorry I had to get technical, but hopefully you can understand why that's so important. Okay? The political candidates who are trumping about how they are so pro-life. They're liars. They don't do their Bible homework. They're claiming to be Christian. And yeah, they're apostate Christian. But honey, if you're going to vote for somebody claiming that abortion is murder, you need to do your homework here. This is Latin. This is Catholic Church. Catholic Church says life begins at conception. Catholic Church lies against the Bible. We all know that. They're famous for lying against the Bible. The funny thing is, is they didn't bother to cover it up in translation there. This is the Vulgate translation of the Hebrew and Greek. This is where our word abortion comes from in English. Can't be clearer to you now, right? Okay? Tanakh, 1985. Miscarriage. Jews would know how to translate their own Hebrew. They don't actually do it rightly all the time either. Because the Bible's a political football for everybody. Okay? And then the rest of these are just sort of political footballs. But it's real interesting that the RSV, going back to 1952 says miscarriage. So we got, look at the age difference here. The Vulgate is 200 AD. Doesn't get clearer than that. 200 AD. All right. Tanakh here is 1985. Miscarriage. But that's what it meant in 200 AD also. And this is by Jews, not by Christians. All right, then in between, you got the RSV of 1952, miscarriage. Yep, that's what that's what the Hebrew means. That's what the Greek means. Then the New Revised Standard, and I don't remember what year that is. Let's find out. 1989. 1989. New Revised Standard. Damn it. Okay, New Revised Standard, nineteen eighty nine. They stayed const, you know, they stayed consistent with their nineteen fifty two translation. This was the original RSV, which is also sometimes used by Catholics, but was very very common when I was growing up in the nineteen fifties. Okay, and then the newer version in 1989 kept to the same translation. Yeah, because it's right. Okay, New Living Translation, garbage, political. New King James Version, garbage, political. New Jerusalem, a later version of the Catholic Bible, miscarriage. It's kind of interesting that the Catholics are the one with the official position that's wrong, but they got the translation right. Okay, the British version of the New Amer New International Version, wrong catering. Okay, New American Standard, New American Standard, 1977, miscarriage. They got that right. New American Bible, I don't know the year, miscarriage. JPS Tanakh, 1917. Sticking with the King James Version, her fruit depart. Okay, but see, if it was an actual child, a human being at that point, the word fruit wouldn't be a good translation. But it is a good translation for the Yaled. Okay? And the reason why you know that, I should say, I should show this more. The reason why you know that, bring this all the way up. See, here's your lead. Your lead da. All right, look. Walad. Not your lead. Walad. Means that your child was actually born. Okay? Sometimes it's like a diminutive. Your lead is used for fetus. All right? Your lead da. The, the generic concept of child because it's got a generic concept of fetus 
and it's by nature a, a masculine plural construct because until it's born, you don't know what it is, male, female, okay? That's like what we say, child in the womb. We use the word child. We don't really use the word son. We use the word child, even if it's not a child yet because you don't know what kind it's going to be. So I don't say son or daughter. All right? But for birth, it'd be yelod. Now, an adjective can be used as a substantive. And yalid. And since this is a construct, see, masculine plural construct, why isn't yalid being used? Because it's only used in the construct state. Because it's not born. See, I want you to understand when the translations differ, there's a reason for that. Okay? But in no event can you say that something that's coming out, this means to go forth, like exodus. Leave, get out of there, exit. Exit would be a good word. The plural, see, because it's plural, exitings of the children, except that they're not really children, they're fetuses, because you don't yet know what kind of child it's going to be until it's born. Is it male? Is it female? Okay, of her, to her. This cannot be translated birth. It cannot be translated give birth prematurely. It can't. Because this is Yaled. All right? If it was born, it would be Walad. Or Yelod. Or Yalid. Especially because it's construct. And this is plural. Impersonal plural, which means the fetus is not a legal person. So again, anybody who sits there and says abortion is murder is aborting the word of God. And you should never vote for a candidate who claims to be a Christian and you're not supposed to have a law background. If he's so incompetent, he couldn't get a hold of the translations and find out for sure the meaning of this verse. Then you don't want him as your president or her. Does it make sense? Why would I want to elect as president of the United States to handle all that hard stuff Somebody who can't even read a simple Bible verse, okay? This is Bible works. It costs $350. A lawyer can afford $350. And you didn't bother to check out what the Bible actually says about a fetus? And hello, if you're Catholic, especially Jeb Bush, did you bother to go and look up what the Vulgate says? Because if you're a lawyer, you have to be trained in Latin. I had to be trained in Latin. We had to need at least a year in Latin if you're going to go to law school. Okay. Well, here's the online Vulgate. That's pretty clear. Abort. Abort the mission. Abort. 200 AD. It's been known to mean miscarriage since 200 A.D. And in 1985, translated by Jews, they knew that too. And then you have six other translations you can choose from. The Revised Standard Version. The New Revised Standard Version. Okay? The New Jerusalem. Later Catholic Version. Okay, the New American Standard of 1977. New American Bible of who knows what year. Okay. The 
do a Reams of 1610. 1610 Catholic Bible, 1610, just like the Vulgate of 200 AD. It's kind of embarrassing when the Catholics get it right and so many Protestants get it wrong. Darby, this is a, this is this is aborting the Word of God. This is a travesty of a translation. That she be delivered. That's not what it said. Okay. Bible in basic English, which usually gets translations wrong, this time gets it right, causing the loss of the child. It's the most idiomatic translation of all of them. Okay? This is just catering. It's just pandering to get you to buy the Bible. Okay? This is 19th century euphemism. Born imperfectly formed. No, it doesn't say born. It says it falls out. It goes out. It exits. And he's actually using the, the he's using these words right here. These are the words he's using. But it doesn't say born. Okay, that's not born. It is imperfectly formed meaning that it didn't get complete, completed, meaning it's a fetus that stops the stillborn. It's, it's like all the parts didn't finish being constructed, okay? But literally, and this is where these guys get their stuff from, okay? Go out, fall out, come out, exit, plural because it's of indeterminate, it's not human yet. So it's plural, the impersonal plural. The impersonal plural, fetuses, fetus, okay, would be a good English translation, of her to her. So her fruit depart. Yeah, yelled is used in an impersonal sense of fruit, fruit of the womb. Depart from her. Just those last two letters there. Three, including the, the Seagull. Isn't that a Seagull? Okay. You see how this is? So, liar. Cheating, playing games with the words but in 1600s, it's more poetic, okay? Not true, it doesn't say born, but you know, that's 19, 19th century English. Cut him some slack for Brenton, okay? NIV lies, just lie. Honesty in the Bible and basic English. Darby, lie, just flat lie. That was a Protestant translation by the Plymouth Brethren. Brethren. Oddly enough, Catholic translation gets it right. Do it, Reem 1610. Fruit depart, well, you know, hedge words. Okay? This a big lie. So that her children come out. All the people on the English Standard Version Translating Committee just fired them yesterday. I've yet to see a good translation, and maybe there are some, but I haven't seen one yet. Okay. Geneva Bible, 1500s. Her child depart from her. No, that's not right. But it's in the 1500s. Okay. JPS Tanakh said 1917. Fruit depart. Copy the King James. New American Bible suffers a miscarriage. Good idiomatic translation. Okay? New American Standard in 1977. She has a miscarriage. Good idiomatic translation. Lie. Good translation, again, Catholic New Jerusalem Bible. Lie, but that's New King James. Doesn't even agree with the old King James. New Living Translation, born prematurely, no, but the New Living Translation is copying Brenton, 
or it looks like it is. New Revised Standard Miscarriage, 1977, yeah. I mean, 1989. Revised Standard, 1977, they got that right. Webster's Revised, after Webster's Dead, Fruit the Part. Tanakh, 1985, Miscarriage. Webster's, Fruit the Part. Young's Literal. Children have come out? No. Young's Literal Translation is not very good. And again, back to where we were starting from. Abort, 200 AD, Latin Vulgate translation that was used in all the churches. Okay. Now, what have you seen? You've seen that any political candidate who didn't do his homework on this verse, how good is he going to be as a president doing his homework on other things? Answer is, not good at all. Anybody who calls himself a Christian and a pro-lifer is actually aborting the word of God to be a pro-lifer. I've already done, you know, the other nine episodes and I've got many more to do. But you can see where this is coming from. And exits, impersonal, maybe one, maybe two, so it's not a human. The fetuses, possibly one, possibly two, from her, and the implication means to her, there is nothing damaged. She doesn't have damage. She personally has no damage. She's a legal person. The fetus is not. Anybody claiming otherwise did not do their homework in the Bible and is not to be trusted and cannot possibly be qualified or competent at the job that you might elect them to. So that basically means all the Republican candidates who claim to be pro-life, throw them out tomorrow. Now who does that leave? Nobody. Because you don't dare vote for Hillary, I'm sorry. And I don't know, maybe there's somebody in the third party platform to vote for. But if anybody says he's pro-life and he's Republican, after what you just saw here, you know, he's lying or ignorant or both, which means he doesn't do his work, he doesn't do his homework, he claims to be a Christian, but he doesn't know and doesn't care about Bible. So how much is he going to know or care about anything else? Peace out.